All right, guys, in today's video, we have a very interesting topic to go over and talk about. We are talking about the cooling solution that Sony is going to be implementing into the PlayStation 5 because a new patent has been filed by Sony that basically shows us what they're planning on doing. Now, I want to let you know right off the bat here that I don't plan to go into extreme detail on the technical side of this because it is very technical, as most patents are. I'm going to try to just give you the gist of what it's saying and why I think it is pretty significant. And it may actually reveal some things to us about the development of the PlayStation 5 or maybe even Sony's goals with the PlayStation 5 and also maybe why we haven't actually seen the console itself yet, which is something that a lot of people have been really wanting to see for quite some time now. And I think that's mainly due to the fact that Microsoft revealed their console, you know, way early on back in December of 2019, which is kind of unheard of. I think it's put just a little bit more pressure on Sony, but so far Sony has just been kind of, you know, uh, taking it slow, taking it easy, and they're kind of on track. So... And I know that doesn't, to a lot of people, they think Sony isn't on track, but rest assured, the last time Sony revealed a console for the new generation was in June of 2013. That's when they actually showed the PS4 console itself. So they are still on track, and we may even see it, see it sooner than that. But getting back to the topic at hand here, we are going to talk about this cooling solution. I'm sure many of you are well aware that there has been a lot of conversation surrounding the cooling solution of the PS5 because there's a lot of people who have been concerned or have concerns. There's also been a lot of people spreading a lot of rumors that the PS5 is going to have a high fail rate, that it's going to overheat, that Sony cannot control the heat output of this console because of how high that GPU clocks at 2.23 gigahertz, which is insane. And we've even heard people go as far as to say that developers have been claiming that the PlayStation 5 dev kits run extremely hot which is obviously not a good thing and does raise some concern but this patent that we're going to go over i think kind of puts all of this to rest so before we go any further if you could do me a favor be sure to hit the like button to help the video out and show your support and hit the subscribe button as well so you don't miss any future content and i just have to take a moment here to thank all of my subscribers because we just hit the milestone of 50,000 subscribers here on the channel which is absolutely incredible I couldn't have done it without you guys so I appreciate it and I hope to bring some quality improvements to the channel going forward in the coming months as well as some extra perks for channel members those of you who go above and beyond to support me here and support me directly in what I do so thank you but getting into this topic here as I said, the patent has been uh, made public. And to break down what this patent is describing, I'm not going to read from it because it's just way too technical. But here's what you need to know. Sony is essentially cooling the APU from the top of the console and from the bottom of the console. And based off of everything I've heard so far looking into this, this is kind of a revolutionary design. In fact, I don't think there's been any other device as far as I know that has cooled it cooled itself in such a way like this is something that really hasn't been done before and it makes sense because this is why mark cerny would put so much emphasis on saying i think that a lot of you a lot of gamers are going to be very pleased with the cooling solution that we've come up with they even talked about how they're going to be showing it off and they're excited to show it off when they finally give us a console teardown which could actually happen in may um, as a lot of people have been speculating and so what does this ultimately mean okay well them finding a cooling solution like this cooling the APU or the console I guess you could just say from the top and the bottom not only is that going to ensure that they can hit those clocks that 2.23 gigahertz and there will be no problem like their cooling is going to be under control they you know controlling that heat is not going to be an issue but it also based off of what this patent is saying another reason why Sony opted to to do it this way it's going to allow them to create a somewhat smaller console and this is important to understand as well because I don't want to say that this gives us a hint as to how much the console could cost, although it might because, you know, we're, we're torn between basically two different numbers, right? There's those of us who are expecting the PS5 to be $400, and then there are those of us who are expecting it to be $500. And I think that as of right now, a lot more people are leaning towards the $500 mark because there's 
just a lot of tech packed inside the PS5. Even though it may not be on paper, you know, the console with more T-flops, there's still a lot of cutting edge technology in it. You look at the features that the controller itself is packing. So yeah, a $500 price point could end up being, um, you know, what we end up seeing. But the fact that Sony is trying to kind of save space in terms of how big this box is going to be, how many, you know, you think about the hundreds of millions of units that are going to be manufactured for the years to come, then they'll save a lot of money by keeping that box kind of small. And there's also some benefits to that, such as, hey, look at all of this power we packed into such a small device, like you would expect it to be bigger, huh? And that, you know, I mean, it's not the most important thing in the world, but it always impresses people. And I think that, you know, considering how hyped people are to see this console, seeing something that looks dramatically different from the next generation Xbox, but also maybe dramatically smaller and just knowing that it actually holds its own, I think that that could go a long way for the console as well. But I've seen some people kind of speculate with this and I find it interesting to um, hear what they have to say because there are some people who say that basically Sony got caught off guard here with the power of the next generation Xbox. They heard how powerful it was going to be with 12 T-flops of GPU compute power, and they were originally going for that 9.2 T-flops, but once they caught wind of what Microsoft was doing, they decided at the last minute that they, they were too far in, right? Like they couldn't just completely scrap their plans. They had to, I guess, see where, find areas where they could kind of push it to the limit, that being the GPU and overclocking it, to 2.23 gigahertz that will raise the t-flop count to 10.3 and make the console more powerful in general right more capable but that comes at the cost of generating more heat and so maybe sony ran into a little i don't want to say a problem but they had to make sure that they found an adequate solution an adequate cooling solution because one thing that has impressed a lot of people is just how far they're pushing that clock 2.23 gigahertz I've seen people express that they are very, very impressed by Sony being able to do that, but they are very concerned about how they're going to keep the cooling uh, under control, or the heat under control, I should say. And now we're hearing what they're doing with this um, heat sink patent, and it seems as though they have a very unique answer for a, you know, um, a very unique problem, I guess you could say. And so... I don't know if I believe that. Like, I don't know if Sony made these last minute alterations, right? But it is possible. I mean, it is possible that maybe Sony was like, look, we need to close this gap. But my question then becomes, what was Sony's original plan when it comes to this console? How much originally were they trying to sell it for? Because if it was $400, then making these changes would only increase the cost of the console and that's something we've been hearing i believe the last we heard was from bloomberg which is not confirmed but it was the rumor that you know sony's having a hard time keeping the control or the console cost under control and it was about 450 dollars which tells you that you know they could still go for that 400 dollar price point but we heard that the cooling solution in particular was going to be expensive but they are going to be saving money basically like maybe sony deemed it uh you know basically they deemed it necessary to go with this cooling solution and find such a expensive, lavish cooling solution because in the end, it would ultimately save them more money because they can keep the console smaller and there's going to be less plastic used, you know, and just a smaller box usually means, you know, more money saved and a cheaper console in general in terms of how much you can sell it for. So maybe that kind of offsets that and we could still see a $400 console. I don't mean to turn this conversation that's about the cooling solution into me kind of guessing the price once again but it really just does make you think like you know sony is it doesn't even make you think it makes you realize that sony is doing things in such a unique way here with this console it's so highly customized and they're going for just a very different approach compared to what microsoft is doing with the next generation xbox where in my opinion, Microsoft is pretty straightforward where it's like, this is an extremely powerful console. The console design reflects that. It's kind of huge. It's a tower, and they have their own interesting cooling solution, but it just sounds to me like Sony's trying to do something dramatically different, and I don't necessarily know if it was reactionary. I don't know if this whole boost mode with the AMD Smart Shift technology to bump that GPU clock up when necessary or after the fact... I don't know if that was an afterthought, uh, or I don't know if that was something that was added on 
after Sony learned about Microsoft's plans. It might not have been. I mean, everything that Sony's doing here could have been in an attempt to basically keep the cost of the console down, but it's hard to say because there's, you know, the idea of Sony wanting to go with an SSD that is as fast as the SSD we're going to be getting in the PS5, as cutting edge. They couldn't have went with an SSD like that and then also put a massive GPU that's 52 compute units inside of the PS5. The console would be insane. It would be like six, $700 at that point. It's just you can't do it, right? So maybe this is the solution that Sony like always was trying to come up with when they realized from day one, you know, Mark Cerny was making this console and he said, we got to go all in on the SSD. This is what's going to revolutionize potentially in the long run game development on a fundamental level. This is what developers want. They want that SSD, but they also realize that they have to compete with the GPU, with the overall graphical power. And they can't compete in the sense of, let's just shove a bigger GPU in there, right? With more compute units, because it's just gonna make the console too expensive. Let's find an alternate solution. This could be the PS5's alternate solution. And everything I think kind of revolves around this, this, uh, this cooling solution because you can't overclock your GPU to insane speeds like that if you can't keep the heat under control. Finally, I want to end this video by letting you know this could also explain why Sony has been particularly quiet this time around in terms of the next gen news rollout. Now, we did get the road to PS5, right? We learned about most of the console specifications. We did get the controller. We did get those wired articles, but a lot of people have been feeling like Sony's just been a little bit too quiet. And this could be a reason why, because they had to make sure that all of this was going to come together the way it needs to come together at the end of the day. And I think that, you know, this is why Sony has ultimately waited to show off their console because it, they may not be. I mean, this stuff could have already been locked in a while ago. I'm just assuming that Sony maybe would want to show the console off a little bit sooner due to how much pressure potentially they felt from, it depends if they felt pressure or not, from Microsoft revealing their console design so early on. But either way, this is very good news. We have basically a revolutionary cooling solution that Sony is using inside of the PS5. Uh, people seem to be very, who understand it, seem to be very impressed by it. And Sony is apparently very excited to show it off. And I think that we're probably going to see a breakdown from Digital Foundry themselves kind of talking about it. I'm mentioning them because they're another source where they talked to Mark Cerny and Mark Cerny did, you know, emphasize that cooling solution. So very interesting stuff here. I know that I've been doing a lot of talking and kind of just going off on tangents here, but it just really makes me, you know, I feel like the more we learn about what exactly the PS5 is doing and the solutions that Sony is coming up with, I think the more telling it is when it comes to their their philosophy and how they're approaching next generation and sony is definitely doing their own thing here and they're finding unique solutions and i guess at this point i'll leave it to you guys let me know your thoughts about this down in the comments below what do you think about this cooling solution how much do you think this console is going to be do you think this cooling solution maybe hints at a cheaper console than we were expecting or do you think that ultimately it's still going to end up being a $500 console? I will be very interested to see what you guys have to say. Again, leave the video a like if you did enjoy it. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and haven't already. Hit the bell notification icon so you never miss an upload. And feel free to share this video out on top of all that. But until next time, guys, take care.